I've decided this morning to come and pay a visit to my local National Trust house. It's called Cork Abbey and it's often referred to as the unstately home and I'm going to show you today why, why it's got that name and reputation. But it's one of my favourites, I absolutely love it. It's got such a fantastic story. It's really starting to feel autumnal here now. Just over the last week, the temperature has really dropped, especially at night. It's a lot colder in the evenings and you're waking up with steamed up windows and you can just really feel there's been a seasonal shift. Summer is coming to an end and autumn is just starting to, just starting to begin. It's just, oh, you can feel it. it's on the cusp of turning. I love that. I just love that feeling. Summertime. I love summertime. And I always feel like that. I recharge my batteries, so to speak. I spend my time just enjoying the sunshine and the days. And I don't really feel that I'm very creative in the summer months. I just feel like I take it slow. And then come autumn, I feel all really inspired and reinvigorated and just rearing to go. So... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, really looking forward to getting out and about in the autumn. It really is one of my favourite times of year here in the UK, and it's just, it's so pretty. All the, all the colours that come out, and just everything's so cosy, and even the rain. I love the lovely rainy days. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling reinvigorated and re-inspired, and full of energy, <laughs> raring to go for autumn. So this morning I'm going to be showing you around Cork Abbey, which actually you can see in the background now. I'm just walking up the hill to get a nice vantage point for you. And then I shall give you a little bit of information about this house. God, I really love being out at this time of the morning. Just first thing, all you can hear are the birds singing in the trees, just waking up and doing their thing. It's really, really lovely. I do enjoy it in the summertime, obviously, but I don't know, there's something, there's something that speaks to me about the autumn. It's a, such a lovely time of the year. Well, before I go in, I'm just gonna get some photos of this really nice woolen coat. It's by my friends at Sunday Floor, and I absolutely love it, it's so nice. It's got thumb holes, which is nice because it pulls your sleeves down over your fingers so they stay nice and cozy, which is perfect for these cooler winter months. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take you inside the house shortly. The house opens at 11 and at the moment it's about half past nine. So the grounds are open, but the, the house isn't just yet. So I shall get some photos of this coat and then I will take you around inside. But, oh, I love this. I'm going to be in this all, all autumn. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the house actually. So that is Cork Abbey. It was home to... Um, let's just call them an eccentric family. It's home to the Harper Crews, who lived there up until the last century, when the property went into the care of the National Trust after the last member of the family died with nobody to inherit. And to say it was dilapidated is an understatement. Uh, you'll see what I mean shortly when I take you inside, but the house is crumbling. But let's start this story from the beginning. From its roots as a religious priory to its history as a family home for 12 generations, Cork Abbey tells many stories. The house we see today stands on the site of a medieval priory. People first came to live at Cork in the 12th century as part of a small religious community, attracted by the secluded forest and a good water supply. Cork only lasted a few years as a priory as the canons moved to the nearby village of Repton. And eventually, after passing through several hands, the estate was sold to Henry Harper in 1622 for £5,350. Through a marriage to Lady Catherine Crew, the family acquired the name of the Harper Crews, and the house stayed in the family until the National Trust began caring for it in 1985. When Cork Abbey was handed to the National Trust, they decided not to restore the estate, which had been untouched for many, many years, but rather preserve it as they had inherited it. 
to cork is unique in that it vividly portrays a period in the 20th century when many country houses in the UK did not survive to tell their story. I love how everything here is left as it was inherited, as they found it. That old box of shelves over there, you've got all your flower seeds, cabbage, celery, asparagus, cucumber, parsnip, rhubarb, herbs, all your terracotta pots. into one of my favourite rooms here at Cork Abbey. It's the orangery in the walled kitchen garden and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I love the light that comes in from all the glass windows. That in itself is so, so pretty. But I also love how when the National Trust inherited this property, they decided to keep it as, as they inherited it. They didn't decide to do it up. So the house and the gardens, everything is in a serious state of disrepair. And Instead of fixing that up, they decided to make it all structurally sound. They did all the work that was required to make sure that it wasn't going to fall apart and wasn't unsafe. So structurally, they did all that work, but the interiors and the gardens, they left as they found them, which you'll, you'll see in the house itself. There's some really beautiful rooms. And then upstairs in the, in the rooms that were closed off, they are in a similar state to this orangery here. And... I love that they've left it with the flaky paint and the cracks in the walls and the visible bricks exposed and rotten frames of timber. I just, I love how it all tells the story of this house and this family falling into a state of rack and ruin. And I think that's the same for a lot of houses these days. They cost so much money for the upkeep and it does to show the amount of work that needs doing to these properties. And, in this particular house, it does show the decline of the family that falls from grandeur. And that is why they call it the unstately home, because it's not in any fit state, really. It's not um, a house that any lord or lady would want to move into, let's put it that way. Um, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Honestly, it's such a fascinating property never fails to enchant me and I have to keep going back here year after year month after month pretty much it's just got so much history and such a story inside here is quite a rare old stove called the Cockle Stove. It says here, early but insufficient heating system installed in 1828 by Harrison of Derby. A very rare survival. Yeah, there's not many of these strange brick stoves. 
So if there's one thing that the Harper Crew family didn't do, it was throw anything out. The modern day equivalent would be called a hoarder. That's what the Harper Crew family were. Over here you've got more stove houses. And next door there's a little pen. I think this would have been where they had some animals. The garden pony shed, there you go. This is where the horses would have been kept. And this is the walled kitchen garden, part of it. This is where the orchard is. There's lots of herbs and flowers, greenhouses for growing things. The apple orchard's at the bottom there. I'd come and have a look and see if they've got any fruit and veg for sale because normally because they grow so much in the garden they put loads out here in these boxes um, but it looks like not at the moment but usually when we come here we um turn the camera around yeah usually when we come here um we always pop by there and get a few bits of fresh food there's usually well, all sorts rhubarb kale all manner of things and it's all really super tasty. So yeah, we usually kind of grab a few things, but it looks like there's gonna be plenty coming up over the next few weeks. There's so much in the garden at the moment, especially apples. Oh my God, there's hundreds of apples. And um, right, so I am going to, ooh, cob nuts. Let me show you these. Anyway, before I got distracted by cob nuts, um, I'm going to, oh, the deer are out. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get close enough to show you. I'll be really quiet, hold on a minute. Anyway, I was going to say that I'm walking back to the house now and I'm gonna take you inside because it's gone 11 o'clock so this should be open so down there is one of the many tunnels here at, at cork abbey it was used for servants and gardeners and all household staff to get around without being seen so there's one thing about cork they didn't want their their staff to be seen or heard well that has looped us back round so we've done a full circle. So I'll walk up there now and take you inside. I love the interiors of Cork. Some rooms are lavish and opulent, as they would have been when the family were living here at their height. Other rooms display items in storage and wallpaper hanging from the walls. During the final years of the last family member to live here, Savancy Harper Crew, most of the rooms that he didn't use were shut away and closed off. Things that weren't used were put away in these rooms, they were closed off so the rooms didn't have to be heated, and he lived in just a small portion of the house up until his death. Sir Vauncey Harper Crewe, the 10th Baronet, built his life around the estate at Cork Abbey. From a young age, he showed a strong inclination towards natural history, and as a child, he shared a love of the gardens with his mother. And then into adulthood, he had papers published in nature journals, he was a huge collector of taxidermy, which you'll see tons of around the house, and Cork's Natural History Collection, which is one of the largest owned by the National Trust, was much assembled by Savancy.
this is the very long tunnel it leads all the way from the house from the courtyard that we're just in all the way to the brew house it smells damp really really damp and fusty light at the end of the tunnel look at these wonky steps look how worn they are so worn with the passage of time From the brewery, you go back at the house. Just bypass the long walk. And then you're out here to the stables. I really hope you've enjoyed this little tour around Cork Abbey. Please subscribe to our channel if you did, as I'll be sharing many, many more. Until then, have a wonderful week ahead. Lots of love. Bye.